So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. So more discoveries, more discoveries, more discoveries. And these discoveries give us a look back into ancient civilizations and cultures, man. So I'm always here to see what discoveries and new things we can find, right? This video here is Egyptologists discovered this 3,500 year old box next to the pyramids that contain this secret. So we're gonna get into it, man. If you knew you know what to do, hit that subscribe button, join the fam, and let's learn something. Here we go. The art of archeology span is a truly fascinating one. The study of ancient civilizations and cultures that came before us is one to respect for it can reveal so much about us as a species. Much of our history is shrouded in mystery, so it's only natural that we seek to expose the secrets of our ancestors, to find out everything we can about them, what they believed in, their cultures, techniques, and structures. They say the past is a different country. They do things differently there. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three wondrous archaeological discoveries. The treasure chest revealing Whoa. clues to Thutmose II's lost tomb. An unbelievable discovery has been made at one of the largest archaeological sites in Egypt. Bet somebody real important once lived here. <laughs> call, call it a guess. How about we do that? Just call it a guess. <laughs> discovery has been made at one of the largest archaeological sites in Egypt, Deir el Bahari. Archaeologists uncovered a buried stone chest holding some interesting items which could date back to over 3,500 years ago. The individuals credited with its discovery were from the University of Warsaw's Institute of Archaeology from Poland. With Are they still alive? It's an immediate question I always ask myself and, and listen for for them to say. Are they still alive? Because the whole notion of cracking open some chest or some box or some tomb or something like that always makes me think of you opening up something that could be possibly cursed. So I, I don't know if anybody else is like that, but I'm like that, bro. I'd be trying to listen in to see if they say, are they still alive or not? Because I just, I, I couldn't bring myself to do it, man. Too many curses out there. 3,500 years ago, the individuals credited with its discovery were from the University of Warsaw's Institute of Archaeology from Poland, with Professor Andrzej Nowinski leading the investigation efforts. It is believed that this discovery can lead us to the lost tomb of Pharaoh Thutmose II. Deir el Bahari is a site near Luxor and Karnak, two other successful excavation sites, and is a remarkable complex of monuments and tombs meant for ancient Egyptian nobility and royalty. The tomb of Hatshepsut lays there, and the Polish archaeologists have been working tirelessly on this site for the past 60 years. Wow. The chest was discovered by sheer luck, found in a pile of heavy debris which resembled nothing more than another segment of an ancient building's wall. Professor Nowinski, when interviewed by the media, explained that it was only after they gave the debris a closer look that they realized what it was, a chest intact and full of archaeological treasures. The they didn't get lucky? Have you been working on that site for how long? How long did they say go back <laughs> and listen? No, bro, that ain't luck. You deserve that fine. You put the time and effort in. ...successful excavation sites, and is a remarkable complex of monuments and tombs meant for ancient Egyptian nobility and royalty. The tomb of Hatshepsut lays there, and the Polish archaeologists have been working tirelessly on this site for the past 60 years. 60 years? No, bro, you didn't get lucky. That was meant for you to find. The chest was discovered by sheer luck, found in a pile of heavy debris which resembled nothing more than another segment of an ancient building's wall. Professor Nowinski, when interviewed by the media, explained that it was only after they gave the debris a closer look that they realized what it was, a chest intact and full of archaeological treasures. The chest measures 40 centimeters in width and length, 
All the items found inside the chest were wrapped in bundles of linen canvas to protect them. Three vital items were found. There was a skeleton of a goose. Historians have since hypothesized that it was sacrificed for religious purposes. The second item was an egg of the goose, potentially representing the life contrasting the departure from life symbolized by the goose. And finally, the egg of an ibis bird. In ancient Egypt, the ibis bird held immense spiritual value, much like the cat. Next to the stone chest, there was something else wrapped in a bundle of linen, a wooden box with the name Pharaoh Thutmose II engraved on it. The box was in the shape of an ancient Egyptian mortuary chapel. The items and wooden box all pointed towards it belonging to a member of the royal family for certain. Professor Novinsky shared his thoughts, claiming that the royal deposit indicates that a temple or a tomb was being raised in the pharaoh's name. The evidence steers this theory due to the fact that the site is in the middle of a royal cemetery. The likelihood of it having been a tomb is immensely high. The found boxes suggest that there was indeed a time when the pharaoh was buried at this site, though whether he is still hidden somewhere deep around the area or if at some point in antiquity his body had been moved elsewhere is unknown, as the tomb of Thutmose II has been deemed lost for thousands of years. The pharaoh himself was only in control of Egypt for a mere three years, from 1476 to 1479 BCE, and was recorded to have passed away at the age of just 16. When he was alive, he wow. was married to his sister, Hatshepsut, Though incest in the bloodline of Egyptian royals was considered normal oh, at the time. I was just about to say that same thing. I know that a lot of people, and I did the same thing in the beginning watching these videos. So if you're new to this style of, of videos, then understand back then, let me preface that with back then, that was normal. Him being of age to, to rule the throne and to marry a, a sibling, that was normal. It's crazy, right? Us today look at that and like, whoa, no. F flag on a play, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's what we automatically think. You know what I mean? I think Tutankhamun Common was like that as well. Same thing. At Shepsut. Though incest in the bloodline of Egyptian royals was considered normal at the time and often was only done to keep the power within the family for political reasons. Mm -hmm. However, the young pharaoh seemed to have been nothing short of a political puppet or his sister wife, who went on to rule over Egypt as one of its first female pharaohs and her reign was regarded as powerful, prosperous and great. As soon as the stone chest and wooden box were found, the team hurried to try and find the tomb of the lost king, believing it to be hidden in plain sight. Perhaps the eternal resting place of the pharaoh had caved in through the millennia and could be found with a little harder work and digging. The archaeologists involved believe they are incredibly close to discovering the tomb of Thutmose II, and if they prove to be successful in their quest, then this will mark one of the greatest archaeological discoveries of this century, if not the- I think, they in, they, I think they're on the right path. They're in a good location, they done already found this. I would suspect his body isn't too far. They're in the vicinity of it, I would, if I had to bet on it. You know what I mean? Could be wrong. They could have buried this here and him somewhere totally different, but it just feels like that's not the case and his body is somewhere nearby. Greatest discovery within the last millennium. This tomb would be completely untouched by the looters of the past and could give us a never before seen insight into what an authentic, untampered with royal tomb looked like and the truth into Egyptian burial rites. Wow. The last time an untouched tomb was found was that of the famous Tutankhamun, which had been abundant with treasures upon its discovery. Mummification Workshop Back in 2016, Egyptian archaeologists re-excavated a site at the Saqqara Necropolis, first discovered in the 19th century. Since then, a new discovery has been made, a mummification workshop connected to a multi-chamber burial shaft, full of ancient treasures and relics that gave an exciting new insight into burial practices. In the words of Dr. Hussein, the chief archaeologist of the project, we are standing before a gold mine of information. The site has been dated to the Sate Persian period of ancient Egypt, 
somewhere between 664 BCE and 332 BCE. The structure is rectangular and made of limestone and bricks. An open area exists with two basins, thought to have contained salt to dry deceased bodies. Other finds include linen bandages and an underground chamber of pottery with names of mummification processes engraved onto them. The process included taking the deceased person's innards and placing them into jars, drying the body and wrapping it. Many ointments were used during this procedure. It was expensive to mummify people, so only nobles and royals were given the option to be preserved. The workshop proves that there were different types of mummification for different types of wealthy patrons, with cheaper and more expensive options available. For example, a communal burial would have been cheaper than an individual private chamber. In the workshop, a gem-decorated mask was found, an extremely rare find as most tombs were looted long before archaeology became a renowned artistic science. The mask's owner has also been speculated, with scientists believing it to have belonged to the second priest of Mut, a mother goddess. That the sucks. recently found relics are on display in the Grand Egyptian Museum, but this is not the end of the search. The discovery has prompted historians to continue excavating the site for more potential discoveries. Valley of the Golden Mummies at the Baharia Oasis, a breathtaking discovery was made, an acropolis which contained various tombs of great importance. 105 mummies were found, all in Ooh. idyllic condition for bodies so old. The area came to be known as the Valley of Golden Mummies, and it is theorized that there may be 10,000 mummies buried here, deep in the earth. Dr. Zahi Hawass discovered them about 380 kilometers from the pyramids. It was an accident when a guard's donkey's leg fell through a hole in the ground. They found gold glimmering beautifully down below and decided to excavate. Alongside the bodies, four tombs dating back to 330 BCE were found. Some mummies were gilded and obviously wealthy citizens, merchants and their loved ones most likely. Could it be possibly that the the pyramids was like the holy temple and if you were of importance you're buried on the inside and then as your rank goes down is outside you know what i mean so the closer you are the closer you are in rank the further away you are the further away down the ranks you are and maybe the burials are just all around the pyramids and stuff like that y'all ever thought of that as a possibility I don't know, I'm just thinking, you know what I mean? All of this is just speculation, that's all it is, but just hearing certain things make you think what make me think or question. And obviously wealthy citizens, merchants, and their loved ones most likely. Some mummies were wrapped in linen, a more economic approach at mummification. It seems that sometimes whole families were laid in the same graves. Archaeologists found one female mummy's head laying on the stomach a male mummy, assumed to have once been her husband. Further artifacts were found, such as gold, jewellery, pottery, coins, bracelets, rings, earrings, and all types of precious metals ranging from silver to bronze to gold and even ivory. The burial site included little clay statuettes of mourners. The point of these was for them to weep for the deceased for eternity and let them never be forgotten. Other statuettes were found of mothers who symbolized fertility. Mm -hmm. Empty vials were found and the largest speculation is that these held tears for the loss of life. The tombs lacked any inscriptions. What started off as an accidental discovery of gold turned into an excavation of 105 mummies, which since its initial founding has become 200 mummies. This has revealed an incredible amount about Romanized mummification during this period and the culture of the ancient Roman influenced Egyptians. All this greatness occurred because a donkey took one wrong step and its leg fell through the sand. The fact that the most grandiose of discoveries are found by complete and utter accident makes one wonder how many more things lay beneath the ground, hidden right underneath our very feet. True. Buried temples, lost tombs, concealed cemeteries overflowing with bodies and skeletal remains from the beginnings of humanity. The potential is endless.
We can only hope that we will manage to uncover more brilliant historical sites which will reveal to us the secrets of our ancestors. What knowledge did they possess that has since been dispersed by the winds of time? Will we ever find out? For now, it remains unknown. But what do you make of these archaeological discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. For Listen, I hope that donkey was treated like royalty itself on that type of fine, bro. <laughs> you stick your leg in sand and you're like, what is that? And then it leads to this type of discovery. Yeah, yeah. A donkey should have been treated like royalty. He should have been eating steaks or whatever the equivalent to that is for a donkey. He should have been given that every day. You know what I mean? But um, y'all yeah, get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what you thought about this video and these discoveries and finds and how you feel and the significance of this type of stuff. And if this continues to intrigue you, stick around and stay tuned. Hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, until the next reaction, I'm gone. Peace.